Digital Hustle shows real people being scammed by our con artists. All the people who've been scammed have been given their money back and have agreed that the footage can be used so that you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. They say diamonds are a girl's best friend. And for Claire, saying rings true. But she's not waiting for someone to buy them for her. Adam and Nick are going to help her steal them. Armed with some fake ID, evidence bags and handcuffs, they are going to take on the role of undercover police officers. This is the Jewelry Store Scam. The hustlers have selected a jewelry store in a well-known shopping centre as the perfect place to stage the scam. The owner has given us permission to carry out this scam. Our cameras will capture all the action. The staff has no idea they are being filmed. Isn't it gorgeous? How much is that one? It's beautiful. Our two other hustlers will be pretending to be police officers. Nick is outside, ready to step in on cue. Thank you. How much is that one? After some browsing, Claire finds a necklace and some earrings that take her fancy. I, I won't get those ones, but I will get that, if that's all right. Not that one either, no. How much did that come to? 847. 847. All right. So, Claire begins to count out the money which is our hustler's cue to make his move. Detective Daly, New South Wales Police, can you just step aside? Madam, can you just take your hands off the counter for Sarah. Alan, do you want to come and grab yeah. the table, yeah, ma'am? Put it down. All right. Just take over there. Can can I, no, you can't. Just leave that there. What's yeah? my Adam's on? acting is so convincing that the shock staff believe he really is an undercover cop. He didn't even need his fake ID. The staff are so stunned, they do exactly as Adam says. Just take over there for me, Alan. Yeah. Leave the stuff no, around. you can't. Just leave that there. Claire is taken aside for questioning. They make up a charge that she's been laundering money. OK, Miss Teal is suspected of uh, money laundering scam. We do believe these bills are marked. Can you just bundle up the cash for me in a pile there? It's OK, you're not in trouble, it's OK. No, I know I'm not, but I'm just... This is overwhelming. What do you mean? OK, OK, just keep it on the If the, the money is... Me, OK, look, if the money's fine, then you'll be OK to go. Sorry. You'll be in no trouble at all. If the money's not fine... Yep. It's fine. What do you mean by fine? OK, okay. okay. the like money the looks... Ones. They are the ones. Same ones. What? All right, I'm afraid that I have to arrest you. For OK, this going to have to be bagged I'm and fingerprinted. The hustlers insist the bills are marked and must be bagged as evidence. In fact, it's the gang's own hustled bankroll, and it's actually not marked at all. So where's the scam? Here it is. Yeah, I need you to identify every single item that she's touched and handled with her fingers. Adam uh, asks the shop staff to identify every piece of jewellery Claire has touched so he can take it away as evidence. So that's the scam. Adam, the fake copper, has convinced the shopkeeper to bag not only the jewellery Claire was going to buy, but everything she touched as well. He hands her a receipt for the items he's taken, which isn't worth the paper it's written on. That's the receipts for the items. Yeah. Alan, that's right. Now, do you want to take her Yeah, she's car? getting pretty aggro, so I'll do take her Do you want to come back in five right. to the prints and the statement? Yes. The hustlers leave the shop, claiming they'll return later to take a statement. The scam is complete. We'll be back in a while. Thank you. And that's how easy it is. They've just walked out with $2,000 worth of jewellery, and they didn't even need to show their fake ID. And just how convinced were the shopkeepers by our fake cops? She said, this is like in the movies, and I'm like, no. And yeah, we were, like, shocked. My heart was, like, beating 200 beats a minute. I was going to ask him to show me the badge again, but then again, he was so serious and scary. I'm like, I better not say anything, otherwise I'll be walking with her. This scam works because uh, the offenders are using shock tactics, really. It's a, a, a situation that the shopkeepers are unfamiliar with, um, it's a high-pressure situation. If you have any doubt, you suspect that they're not bona fide, firstly, have a good look at the badge, ask them who their supervisor is, and ring the station. Check them out. Don't be embarrassed to ask a lot of questions and ask all the questions you need to do to satisfy yourself that they are really police. Every day, millions of Australians use all forms of public transport to go to and from work.
So it's no surprise the bus and train stations are a favourite with thieves. Our Aussie hustlers have the new scam that's all in the bag. Our hustlers are at the train station. But before they catch a ride, there's just enough time to do a bit of shopping. Of course, they don't plan on spending any money. This is the booster bag scam. Earlier that day, our hustlers put some finishing touches on what appears to be a normal bag. We won't show you exactly what we've done, but you get the idea. The bag's been adapted so that in the right hands, it could separate you from all your personal belongings. Big bag straight down the top of it. Lift it up and you boosted the bag. This railway station provides rich pickings for our hustlers. Commuters, tourists and travellers all have one thing in common. They're all carrying their prized possessions. But for how long? Our hustlers are on the lookout for their first victim. Someone who is on their own and they can distract. They find a mark. But how are they going to separate her from her bags? It's time for Claire to stage the first part of the scam. She walks closely to the mark and drops a purse full of change. It's all going to plan. Thank you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the mark steps away from her bag to help Claire pick up some coins. Adam quickly moves in and boosts the bag. Thank you so much. By the time the mark realises her bag is missing, it's too late. Let's take another look. When the mark helped Claire, she became separated from her bags. This allowed Adam to boost her bag without her noticing. To avoid suspicion, he even helped pick up some of the money. The mark has no idea where her bag is gone. Our hustlers move straight on to the next mark. Claire is sat next to a commuter on a bench. His briefcase is on the floor next to him. He's got no idea he's going to be their next victim. Claire places her mobile phone on the seat next to him. This will act as a decoy. Excuse me? As the mark talks to Claire, Adam moves in, boosts the bag and walks away with all his belongings. It's just over there. Oh, thank you so the much. The scam is so successful, Have it takes him a couple of minutes to realise he's been ripped off. Let's take another look. As Adam approaches, Claire distracts the mark. Whilst the mark's back is turned, Adam moves in unnoticed. Boosts the bag. The mark is totally oblivious to what just happened. Now he realises it's gone. Our hustlers move from the platform to the train. They use the same technique. They choose their mark. Claire distracts and Adam lifts. This mark quickly notices, but it's still too late. Obviously, our hustlers don't keep the mark's belongings. Mark number one was visibly relieved to get her bag back. I was picking up money and I wasn't looking at where my stuff was and when I turned back, everything was on the floor and my bag was gone. The booster bag is so quick and so effective, it takes a matter of uh, seconds uh, to steal your property. The scammers will work in a group of two or three. One will apply the distraction while the other takes the bag. There may even be a third, uh, even to act as a lookout or, uh, or to pick the marks or even involve themselves in the distraction. Um, if you put something at your feet, don't be distracted. Be mindful that you shouldn't be distracted um, and look after whatever you've got.